Okay, and let's just look at page 38, where you have your spelling words for this week. I actually have to get my spelling book. Okay, um, this is unit five. These are words um, that go with fine arts. So you would use these words in the fine arts. What are fine arts? Arts that are fine. No. Um, music. Yes, like music and theater and um, visual arts and dance. And those are the fine arts. Okay? So these would be words that would be used in that setting. Okay? Um, anything that, you know, has artistic expression, that's considered the fine arts. So I'm going to read down the list of words on page 38. You guys take a look at them so that you can hear how they are pronounced. We have brilliant, criticism, portrait, symbolic, prelude, texture, impressive, interlude, sweet, not S-W-E-E-T, but S-U-I-T-E, <laughs> sweet, expressive, sonata, operetta, romantic, romanticism, repertoire, doesn't look the way it is said, repertoire, mythical, ensemble, opus, overture, and melodic. Can you sit down? Okay. Um, any questions on any of these words? Okay. So um, we'll be taking the pretest in a moment. Um, pretest corrections will be due tomorrow, as always, and then your spelling lesson, pages thirty-nine to forty-one, is due on Friday. Spelling test is on Friday. Okay, so look over your words while I write down your homework and get ready for your pretest while I'm writing down your homework. Okay. I just want to say hi to everybody at home. Hi, Addie. Oh, and Luke and Kate. Hey, Addie. And Jalen. Hi, Bernadette. Hi, guys. I missed you. Hi.
Hi, Addie. Hi, Kayla. All right. Here we go. You know, here's what I'm going to tell you guys. Listen, everybody. This is good for you to know. If you are ever absent, you can go on to Google Classroom, and I will have posted everything that you need to do, everything that you've missed. Okay, <coughs> so if you're absent, I won't have a folder for you, or I won't have work for you when you, well, I will, I'll save it anyway, but I will have your work posted on Google Classroom. Wow. So I can post it only for certain students, so I've been doing that. Um, so just know that if you're absent, just go for, at least for ELA, go to Google Classroom, and I'll have your work listed there. So. If you were feeling okay, you could do it that day as well. And even if I make any videos, do you guys know how to go to the YouTube channel to Not a clue. watch the videos? Yeah, what, how do you get there? St. Joe's Rosemont School or something like that. Sure that yeah. Okay. Well, we'll have to show you. All right. So anyway, just so you know. All right. Page third, or not page, <laughs> pretest. Number one, number one is brilliant. The reflection caused a brilliant flash. Brilliant. Number two. Number three, portrait. The wealthy industrialist hired a famous artist to paint her portrait. Portrait. Symbolic. Number six, impressive. The audience applauded the orchestra's impressive performance. Impressive. Number seven, expressive. The girl's sorrow showed in her expressive eyes. Expressive.
Number nine, repertoire. The singer had a vast repertoire. Repertoire. Prelude. The prelude was very beautiful. Prelude. century are part of the age of romanticism. Romanticism. Seventeen, mythical. Stories about Greek gods like Zeus and Apollo are mythical tales. Mythical. of that concerto, opus. Nineteen, overture. A Broadway musical begins with an overture. Overture. And twenty, melodic. The second part of the symphony is very melodic or melodic. Melodic. Does anybody need any repeated? Ariam? 12. 12 is interlude. Jameson? Um, 19. 19 is overture. 17. Logan? 10. 10 is ensemble. Leah? 13. 13 is sweet. Bethel? 16 is romanticism. Jameson? 15. 15 is operetta. Jameson, why don't you bring it up here? And it's like really I will get too. out your list. Okay, just. You can make corrections. Um, remember, write the word, any word that is incorrect, write out three times.
While you are doing that, why don't you also take out your voyages, um, pages 14 and 15, and your opinion paragraph outline. I'm just going to come around and check off that you have those things.
Wednesdays tomorrow. Um, let's see. So, Maggie, do you want to go work on it in the hallway? Um, if any spread out, if there's anyone else here. Who else? Lucas? Please. Lily, you can. You guys make sure you're spread out in the hallway working on it. Pages 14 and 15. Um, Nathan, you had your review, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Um, let's correct it. Section 1.1. Um, you're putting the plural form of nouns in there. So number one would be people, families, F-A-M-I-L-I-E-S, and hobbies, H-O-B-B-I-E-S. Number two, cousins, add an S, members, add an S, and core stays the same, C-O-R-P-S. Number three, queries, um, it should end with I-E-S. Number five, me it should be media. So medium is singular for media and it refers to like television, radio, newspaper. Those are all types of um, media. Media is plural. And then each one of those is a medium. Okay? So media. Six would be tomatoes. Um, add an ES. Seven is geese, G E E S E. Four. Oh, I think mice. I did. Yeah. Yeah, four is five. mice. So five is media, six tomatoes with an E S, seven geese, eight loaves, L O A V E S. Nine is oxen. Lucas, did you have this? Okay, you should be correcting it then. Ten is crises, C R I S E S. Eleven is halves, H A L V E S. Twelve inquiries, ending with an I E S. Thirteen colonies, ending with an I E S. Fourteen matrices, M A T R I C E S. S. 15 lives, L I V E S. Anybody need any repeated there? Sam? Can you re spell the one for 14? M A T R I C E S. Thank you. Okay. Um, anybody have any questions about making nouns plural? Okay. Um, 1.2, again, making nouns. No, I guess that was yeah, no. all the same. I'm sorry, 1.2, yes, making nouns plural. <laughs> okay, 16, boats, add an S. 17, foxes, add an ES. 18, radios, add an S. 19, potatoes, would be ES at the end. 20 zeros can be either, just add an S or an ES. Um, 21 would be maids of honor. The S goes after, at the end of maid, so maids of honor. 22 spoonfuls, <coughs> S at the end of full, spoonfuls. 23 stays the same, deer. 24, drive-ins. S at the end of in, drive-ins. Questions with that? Okay, 1.3 is you're finding the subject. 
Um, and then the subject complement, right? That's what you had to do. Okay, so 25, Newfoundland is the subject, and the subject complement is province. 26, province is the subject, and um, island is the subject complement. 27, island is the subject. There is no subject complement. 28, Newfoundlands is the subject. 29, animals is the subject. And subjects is the subject complement. 30, Newfoundland is the subject. There is no subject complement. 31, dogs is the subject. And water rescuers and companions are subject complements. Okay, does anybody need repeats? Logan? 29 animals is the subject and subjects is the subject complement. So, subject com subjects, where do they come in a sentence? Usually in the beginning. Usually in the beginning before what? The action verb. The any kind of a verb, action or linking verb. How about subject complements? Where do they come? After, After a linking verb. After a linking verb, okay, so if you have an action verb, you will not have a subject complement. It has to follow a linking verb, and it renames the subject. So the subject and the subject complement will be the same person, place, or thing, okay? And the formula would be find the subject, find the linking verb, ask what, okay? Any other questions about subject complements? Okay, um, 1.4 is um, ooh, telling whether each word is a direct object, an indirect object, an object of a preposition, or an object complement. So 32 lessons is a direct object. Children is an object of a preposition. 33, parents is an indirect object. Information is a direct object. And instruction is an object of a preposition. And September is an object of a preposition. What was instruction what? Object of a preposition. There was a lot there. 34, flute is a direct object. Years is an object of a preposition. 35, lesson is a direct object. Disaster is an object complement. 36, Mr. Ramos is a direct object. Teacher is an object complement. 37, students, indirect object. Chance, direct object. 38, jazz, direct object. 39, kind of blue, object complement. Okay, anybody need repeats there? Okay, so <coughs> just a quick review. Direct objects follow what kind of verb? Action, Action verb. verb. Action verb. So the formula is the same as the subject complement. Find the subject, 
find the action verb instead of a linking verb, and then ask who or what, that will give you the direct object. Do that first when you're on this type of exercise, okay? Um, indirect object, the formula for finding that would be first you have to find your direct object, right? Because you cannot have an indirect object without a direct object, okay? You have to have a direct object to have an indirect object. So find the subject, the action verb, the direct object, and then ask to whom or for whom, and where should the where sh would the indirect object be? And between the direct object and the subject. The subject. Complement. No. Verb. Verb. Yes. So the indirect object will come in between the action verb and the direct object. Okay. For an object complement, again, you have to find the direct object first because an object complement renames the direct object. So you find the subject, the action verb, the direct object, and then ask what or who after the direct object. That will find your object complement, and it will follow the direct object. It will be after it. Okay, and then for an object of a preposition, that's the only one where you do not have to have a direct object in a sentence. Remember, it's the noun that ends the prepositional phrase. Tommy? Um, can you wait? Okay. Okay, anybody need any other explanation about all those different types of, types of objects. That's probably one of the most difficult parts, right? Okay, so um, we skipped 40 through 43. So 1.5, um, you had to find the appositive in the sentence. And then if it was non-restrictive, you had to add commas. So 40, for the appositive is slave, the appositive phrase would be a slave born on a plantation in Maryland, and it's non-restrictive, so you would put commas after Tubman and after Maryland. 43, the up, or no, 45, I'm sorry. 45, the appositive is Nat Turner, and that is restrictive, so no commas. 46, the appositive is Harriet Green, and that one is non-restrictive because you're only, she has one mother, right? So the commas would go after mother and after green. 47, the appositive is series. The appositive phrase is a series of safe houses for slaves. And that is non-restrictive, so you would put a comma after railroad. 48, um, the appositive is individuals. And the appositive phrase is individuals responsible for moving fugitives from one safe house to the next. It is non-restrictive, so you would put a comma after conductors. Okay, any questions on, um, actually let's do the next section <coughs> first. You just had to say whether the appositive was restrictive or non-restrictive. So 49 is non-restrictive, 50 restrictive, 51 restrictive, 52 non-restrictive, 53 non-restrictive. Okay, what was 48? 48, yeah. um, the a positive phrase is individuals responsible for moving fugitives from one 
safe house to the next. The actual positive is just individuals and a comma goes after conductors. Okay, so remember in a positive is a noun that gives you more information or describes a noun right in front of it. It's kind of like an interruption in the sentence. Like you're, 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 um, you're telling about something and then you're like, oh, like the reader or the listener needs a little more information. So you tell a little bit more. So it's like an interruption in the main sentence. Um, remember, it is restrictive if it's needed in the sentence in order to understand the sentence. And you would not put commas around a restrictive a positive. It is non-restrictive if it does not, it is not needed in the sentence in order to understand it. You're just adding information and you do need to put commas around it if it is non-restrictive, okay? Any other questions about that? Okay, and then the last section are um, possessive. So 54 neighbors would just have an apostrophe at the end. 55 teens would just have an apostrophe at the end. 56 mothers to bees would be apostrophe S. So B E apostrophe S. 57 principles would just have an apostrophe after the S at the end. 58 father Jesses would um, be an apostrophe S at the end, so it would be like this. J-E-S-S -S apostrophe S. So you would first write his name the way it is, and it's singular, and then you make it possessive, okay? Since it's singular, you add another apostrophe S. Okay, 59, woman's is apostrophe S, so W-O-M-A-N apostrophe S. 60, boys is just an apostrophe at the end. 61, the <coughs> Davises would be D-A-V-I-S-E-S, -E and then an apostrophe. So just an apostrophe at the end of that. Um, 62, Bach and Mozart's music. So they both should have an apostrophe S after them because they each have their own music. It's separate possession. So they both have apostrophe S. 63 would be mom and dad's cars. So just an apostrophe S after dad. Mom stays the same because this is joint possession. They own the car together. So you just put the apostrophe S after the noun closest. And 64 would be Darnell's apostrophe S and Melissa's apostrophe S um, because that is separate possession they each have their own report that they're doing. So you put an apostrophe S after both of those. Okay, any repeats? Any questions? So remember the rules for, a pot for possessive. Possessive means something belongs to them, right? They own it. So you always, always, always just add an apostrophe S unless the word has both, is both these things. It's plural and it already ends in S. That is the only time that you just add apostrophe. It, the word has to be both of those things, plural and at, end in S, okay? Uh, separate possession. Two people both have their own, own their own thing. So we said Marisol and 
Um, Bethel, they each, did we say their book? They each, or let's, we use their table, I think. They both right now have their own table. So you'd have to say Marisol's and Bethel's tables are in the front row. Okay, because they both own their own. If it was the way it used to be last year and they were both sitting at one table, then they would that would be joint possession. And then we would say Marisol and Bethel's table. We would only put the apostrophe after the name that was closest to what they owned together. Okay? Okay, so review your notes. You should have taken um, notes on all the formulas. Review this page, Jameson. Okay, and any questions? <coughs> Tommy, yes, go ahead. Okay, so test is tomorrow. Test is tomorrow on the noun unit.